what has been an emotional week for WWE. We are going to get to the end of the week with Unscripted Today and, of course, Today and um, Evolution Tomorrow. Of course, the biggest story going around this week was the fact that Roman Reigns, Joanna Wale, came out on Monday Night Raw, opened the show, and told us all the most shocking news I think we've heard on a episode of Raw SmackDown or any programming on WWE television probably ever and probably ever will again outside of like the passing of Chris Benoit or the passing of Betty Guerrero but I know I usually do a this week on Unscripted but it was just it just felt like I couldn't get I, I just couldn't find it, it just felt like it was not the way to start this episode we are going to go for Raw uh, Smackdown in NXT NXT UK but it's just, I had to open it up like this. It just felt right. And it's it's just, it's one of those weeks that if you are, and it brought the community together first and foremost. A lot of people, outside, outside of a couple bad eggs who want to blame or want to attack a JD from NY or other big, big, big content creator where it's like, how could you talk crap on Roman Reigns? The guy has cancer. How could you do that? How could you be such an asshole? First off, to those motherfuckers right there. Um, we didn't know. None of us knew that this guy was going to be had, had leukemia. It's a private matter that he came forward with and told us all something that none of us knew. And it's unlike some of you retards, most of us, not all of us, but most of us can e easily can differentiate Roman Reigns from Joe Wale. We're not hating on Joe when we sit there and call out WWE's bullshit for, Joe, for pushing Roman Reigns. And we're not hating on Joe, we're hating on Roman. They're two different things. It's just like any TV character out there that you watch, any movie character. Maybe there was an Avenger of yours that you didn't like that they came out with. Um, you're not going to hate the person behind that character because of what they're doing. When Bill Coulson passed, um, died in the Avengers and came back in the Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., there were people out there who hated the fact that they did that. And you know what? It's not it's not wrong to hate the fact that Marvel decided to go out and do that. But don't sit there and verify people's opinions on a character. It's a, it's totally different from any from a from the actual guy. It's not that hard to differentiate the difference between character and real person. Only a few people, like the people who sit there and like, how could you tell this guy that he um, he sucks or this or that he had cancer? It's um, those are the people who are the emote the meme of it's still real to me, damn it. When we all know it is what it is. He's going to be out for a good while. We will talk about who knew, how long, what, and where WWE goes from here, as well as so much more this week on Unscripted. There is so much to talk about, but of course, as we're going to do, we'll talk about Raw SmackDown, at NXT UK, NXT, and the final episode of the May Young Classic. Of course, outside of Monday Night Raw's opener, there wasn't much going on. I mean, they did have a DX talk, a DX email uh, promo with a Undertaker and um, Kane promo, which was kind of in bad taste with how everything started. The burial of the, the, the burial, the supposed burial of DX at Crown Jewel during this episode was probably a bad move. People are going to sit there and throw shade at WWE for what happened, what happened to at the end of the show when it came to Dean Ambrose's heel turn. First off, anybody who has a problem with Dean Ambrose's heel turn, go fuck yourself. It was the perfect time, the perfect place, and the perfect situation. WWE sometimes shows you they know what they're doing. If anybody said it was sickening, it was dumb, it was appalling, it was unethical, or whatever, WWE did their job. They got the most, they did it at the right time with the most heat that they're going to get for Dean Ambrose. And anybody who's like, oh, when does WWE ever let something be real? Um, yeah, that's not the point of things. This is WWE we are fucking talking about. Deal with it. 
it is a great thing that they did that. Any other time, they could have did it next week, they could have did it oh, six, like three weeks from now, they could have did it before Survivor Series when this was supposed to actually happen, and it wouldn't have felt the same. It would have actually probably diminished e versus heel turn. This was the best time to do e versus heel turn. Let's see what else we have here. Nothing else really on Raw happened. The biggest thing about Monday Night Raw, and we'll talk about that later some more, is that this is the time for everyone else to step up. Where do we go from here? Only time will tell. WWE has an ample opportunity to hit the hard reset button on a Monday Night Raw and give us something worth watching. I mean, I never, ever, ever... You would, and I would never, ever, ever want somebody to be taken out like this as Roman Reigns was to give us a hard, a hard reset. But things happen for a reason, and we're in this position because we are. This was, this was just the uh, Roman Reigns. It happened. WWE fell into this, and WWE is now going to have to pay for the fact that they put all their eggs in one basket, and this guy was pushed so high and so hard, sacrificing everybody on the roster, sacrificing everything just to get this guy over. Am I happy the fact the guy's injured? No. There is, or I'm out? No. There is no one should, and nobody at all should even think that this is... A good idea because it's not a good thing because it's not I would never want somebody to be hurt like this I would not want, never want somebody taken out like this and if you're one of those cynical people out there who think all oh, good for Roman Reigns he deserved to have this happen go 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 shoot yourself and to anybody and I say anybody who sits there and is like oh this is a work this is WWE's way to get to get him over to get him as over as they can be cut it out cut it the fuck out this is a legitimate thing. If w- because of how many people knew about this injury, this um, this uh, this affliction for him, if it turned out to be a work, he would be hated by everybody who did not know. It would be that bad. He wouldn't have to quit wrestling in WWE. He would never be trusted again by anybody. And then, like this would be going way too. Bar if WWE tried to make this into, make this a work and this was actually a work and not legitimate, it would be one of the worst things they ever done, and it would definitely be something that uh, they would. They're, they're already, their stock is already falling. I'm just gonna say this because of Crown Jewel still going up on in Saudi Arabia, their stock has fallen to under seventy dollars per share. If this turned out to be a work and WWE was just playing everybody during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They would probably lose most, if not all, of their stock. SmackDown Live, on the other hand, was just a good nothing show, plain and simple, a nothing show. They had SmackDown Live 1000 last week, which had nothing, like, just did not even feel like a celebration. Like, unlike Raw 1000, where you had everybody in the woodwork coming out to to the, um, come out there and give us everything they could to make it feel like a special show. SmackDown Lost Thousand did not look did not feel like a special show. And then we had the SmackDown this week, SmackDown Live this week and it just felt like a bland show. That was boring. There was nothing there. They, they these these two shows were actually the go home show to Evolution. And we'll talk about why Evolution is even happening and it does not surprise me with one of the reasons why this is happening. And it was ju- and it would just like Seth McMahon to have a Reason, this reason for this. SmackDown Live, just we had Rey Mysterio versus The Miz. We had The Big Show versus Kofi Kingston. Do you really want to see The Big Show beat down Pokey, Kofi Kingston for like five, ten minutes before you know the New Day and the Bar come in and make everything as it is? No, I wouldn't. I don't know why anyone would, but it is. It was what it was. One side note before we get into NXT and everything, I do not have it in my notes, I don't believe, but Alexa Bliss has been pulled from the Evolution card and replaced with Alicia Fox, which is absolutely asinine, the fact that Alicia Fox, Alicia Fox, one of the botchiest women in the company, is going to be in a bigger high-profile match than Asuka, Bailey, Sasha Banks, Ember Moon, and anybody like that. Are you kidding me? That just makes... 
Evolution is much more of a joke. We will talk about three matches. One match was pulled from the show because I makes sense. Why made no sense why they would even have this match on the show, but we will talk about that as we get to it. We do. Then we're going to talk about NXT UK, which is, according to sources, and I guess on the WWE Network, is going to be airing two hours of content for um, starting soon because they realized they probably realized they had too much content to go. Um, for the rest of the year, and they want to get it out as quite quite quick as they can. So four to f- four o'clock and five o'clock Eastern Standard Time, they are going to be streaming episodes two, um, three and four, and pretty much I believe the rest of the first set of tapings. As uh, um, three o'clock, we'll have the replay from last week. So we are going to definitely have two hours of NXT UK. NXT UK still getting it's still getting its feet still getting its feet wet with the WWE Network. It's definitely the, there's really not much storyline going on right now outside of you know we have Zach Gibson versus Noam Dar next week is going to be on the first episode. There's really not much else going on for there. It's definitely going to be something that maybe three, four, five months from now we can sit there and say they're getting they're hitting their stride. But NXT UK is definitely off to a slow start. It was a better show this week compared to last week. Of course, last week it felt like they were just playing it safe. But this week was definitely a lot better, and I hope to see more in the next two episodes coming next week. NXT itself is... Before we get to NXT, I should say, 205 Live, I did watch the no disqualification match, as I said on Wednesday, of... Mustafa Ali versus Sadeo Tommy, and those two beat the holy fuck out of each other. Wow, it was a, it was a, it was a damn good match, and it's a damn shame. And I like the fact that 205 Live is taped before SmackDown now, even after the mixed match challenge ends, and say they want to put 205 Live back after SmackDown. Put it before SmackDown, tape it before SmackDown because the crowd actually gets into the show. The crowd actually has life to it. And the crowd actually feels like they care a little bit more. They don't care as much as you hope, but you can actually hear the crowd getting into the show. So hopefully, we will see more of 205 Live getting where it should be. But that was a damn good match. And it does suck that they're no longer on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live. I mean, Monday Night Raw. But it would definitely not be... It's definitely probably a good thing to not because if WWE, if Vince McMahon had his hands on the Cruiserweights again, they would be back where they were just seven, eight months ago. NXT, the biggest thing about NXT this week was why Johnny, why? Why did Johnny Logano super kick Aleister Black? Why did Johnny Logano supposedly attack Alistair Black. There were people out there saying it's Candice LeRae who actually attacked Alistair Black, and Candice LeRae is being covered up by her husband. Hmm. Hmm. Let me think here. I don't. I just don't know. It just still doesn't make any sense unless, unless Don, Johnny Gargano is doing something that would be like Randy Orton did last year with the. Um, Wyatt family. He infiltrated the Wyatt family. He got Bray Wyatt to pretty much turn on Luke Harper, and then the next thing you know, he's burning down the the house of Bray Wyatt, his his compound, and the next and then after that, he goes and takes out the t- he takes out Ray, Ray Wyatt, cut the head off of the snake, and ended the Wyatt family for the most part. Maybe that's what he's gonna do. Maybe he's working his maybe he's working some magic and he's getting he had to sacrifice his friendship or like his partnership or like respect of Alistair Black to get inside, make make Tommaso Ciampa think that he's on his side. Maybe we for we see a mini reunion of DIY but as heels and then and then we have the turn. At takeover Philadelphia or on our way to take over Brooklyn Five in um, WrestleMania weekend, if they call it takeover Brooklyn, because it is going to be in the Barclays Center. Maybe, maybe we see Johnny Gargano turn on Palace on Tommaso Ciampa, 
and Tommaso Ciampa faces Johnny Gargano one more time at TakeOver Brooklyn 5, and that's where, and I'm still saying this, I pitched this too, maybe, maybe we see by the end of that night, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae both walking out as NXT champions for their respective um, divisions. And at the end of the night, we see the embrace of Johnny Gargano and Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae as we see them both hug and be all happy and everything for themselves. That would be interesting. The main classic also was also the final episode this week. Go check out all of these on the channel: Raw, SmackDown, NXT UK, NXT, and the main classic. We had Miko Sanamora versus Tony Storm. Miko Sanamora was. By far, the MVP of the May Young Classic. The fact that she got to the semifinals was nothing but a miracle for most of us. It was one hell of a show she gave us, and I definitely am happy the fact that I got to see Mako Sanamura in WWE. Now, a lot of people were sitting there complaining, like, oh, how are you going to have Storm beat, um, kick out of the Death Valley Driver and the Scorpion Kick, and beat Mako Sanamura with two, two... Storm Zero is what they call it. That is not the Storm Zero. The other move that she uses for the um, UK where she like cradles them on her side and drops them down. That's the Storm Zero. I don't know why they decided to make her use the Tiger Driver, but that's WWE for you. Anyway, that was a hell of a match, and that was definitely the match of the tournament so far. I'm not going to say it's the match of the tournament completely, because Io Shirai and Tony Storm could have probably one of the best matches out there. Unfortunately, I think it's going to take a hit, because it is being on Evolution, a pay-per-view that Vince McMahon is running. Triple H, has no, Triple H and his crew are not running Evolution. That's, it's, 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 a, it's a damn shame with the fact that Triple H is not running Evolution, the pay-per-view, because if he was, it would actually do some justice to all the matches, and that's just not how it's working. Now, um, Io Shirai vs. Rhea Ripley was supposed to be Io Shirai vs. Tegan Knox, with I believe Tegan Knox winning the match and moving on to the finals to take on Tony Storm. That was the news coming out of the injury, was that they had to rewrite the entire end of the show because, or the end of the tournament because Tony T Tegan Knox got injured. Now, Rhea Ripley, now T I already said this before, Tegan Knox versus Io Shirai would have been a great match. But in my opinion, Tegan Knox, um, Rhea Ripley versus Io Shirai was a much better built match because Rhea Ripley has come into her own. It is definitely a hell of a, a hell of a talent, and having her go up against Io Shirai and giving us that heel versus babyface dynamic that we're not we did we didn't see in the first match was a good way to end the first two rounds. They did. So it's going to be Io Shirai versus Tony Storm, and that is definitely going to be a toss-up. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Before we get into anything about evolution and stuff, we are going to follow up on the Roman Reigns stuff. We do have a good bit of news on this. When did Roman know that leukemia had returned? This is... Interesting. Roman Reigns had to make the incredible difficult announcement on Raw this week as he has pulled away his pro wrestling persona and admitted that he had leukemia and it was back. He had to relinquish the Universal Championship and after receiving a sea of hugs backstage, he exited the building. There is a video on 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 WWE.com's YouTube page right after he came back and they were showing the replay of... What he had to say, he's getting hugs from Triple H, Shawn Michaels, he's getting words from Triple H, Shawn Michaels, I can't hear what they say. He gets a hug from Paul Heyman, but you actually can hear what Paul Heyman says, where he is not alone, which he's not. We, us as fans, must band together to support Roman. If you are a bigger content creator than I am, um, JD from New York's doing it. I wish I was big enough to be able to do it myself, but... If you have a way to donate to Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, make sure to do it just to raise awareness. Roman Reigns, that's the benefit of Roman Reigns being somebody who's afflicted by this because him and his, him and his state can talk to or be there to help raise awareness with his celebrity and actually get people to actually talk about it. Now, it makes it... Um, 
He said once he he said once he knows exactly the type of leukemia he has, it makes it harder to tell what he'll be dealing with or the odds it will come back. Since Trains is so young, just 33 years old, the odds are probably higher than it will be surface again. Although Meltzer didn't know that he'll have to ask around about the exact numbers. <clears throat> Obviously, they got the word before Friday because he was supposed to be back on the road by Friday. So that explains obviously why he wasn't at the house shows. He was at the TV last Monday, so the diagnosis should have come in in, last, in the last six days. I know during the day when there were different stories out there about him, I was asking about the response. There was a story coming out in which it was saying that Daniel Bryan and John Cena refused to work um, Crown Jewel, which... I know I can understand why because of the um, religious beliefs or whatnot, but then it also was another one that came out that said that Roman Reigns was injured. Now, I just figured it was going to be, oh, he's not going to work the house show, so just be on Raw, and when he came out on Monday Night Raw, and I knew this, and I didn't know about the leukemia, but I knew something was not right when he came out in a t-shirt, jeans, a gold chain. He didn't come out as Roman Reigns. He came out as Joe Anawale. This was not Roman when he came out. He was Joe. He was Joe. There was no Roman at all on Monday Night Raw. It was a different vibe completely as soon as he came out. I know during the day when there was no injury, I didn't think it would be this. Hopefully, Roman Reigns will be able to get leukemia behind him once again and beat it for good this time. This is a very bad situation, and only time will tell how WWE will fill his spot on the roster. But they obviously didn't have a lot of time to plan for Reigns' exit because this is the kind of news you never see coming. WWE obviously needs to need, needs to make some changes, and it looks like they started with that direction this week with Elias turning babyface and Dean Ambrose turning heel. But Meltzer, Meltzer continues to talk about when Reigns could have received the devastating news that was, that his leukemia was back. So between last Monday, mo the Monday before, where they had that six-man six tag match again between the Shield and um, the Dogs of War, which saw Roman, Braun Strowman pretty much turn babyface, and um, this past month, this Monday, they got the news pretty much because it wasn't long. Like he was just gone this past weekend. He was supposed to be on the house shows, and he wasn't. And news of him being injured came out. But how many people knew knew that he was going to be injured? That he was going. This was his. This was what the why he missed this past weekend's house shows. Regarding Roman Reigns announcing his battle with leukemia on Monday, I brought the PW Insider reports that 99% of those in the company had no idea what Roman was going to announce before he went out to the ring. The upper level officials in the company, likely the McMahon families and the circle, Kevin Dunn, Triple H, Stephen McMahon, Vince McMahon himself, of course, and talent relations were the only ones who knew before the announcement was made of money that Reigns was ill, along with members of Reigns' family. The announcers were not, were not clued in to what the announcement was before it was made. On a related note, Vince McMahon was not in, in attendance on Monday, as you could tell in the video when they, had, they did after, like after he was done with his speech. Now... You could just tell that when Cole, they 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 shot back to Cole, Renee Young, and Corey Graves. Corey Graves looked like he was about ready to cry, and he was trying to hold in the best he could. And when Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins first came out, you could just tell that these two just were choked up, and they didn't know. They didn't know. I mean, Seth Rollins was choked up. Dean Ambrose, you could tell for the majority of the night that he tried to hold it in as best he could. The only time you could really see him even break a little bit of character was on the was when they did the shield entrance with each other and you could just see him wipe it, wipe his face to, be, to wipe a tear away. Reigns taking time off and dropping the WWE Universal title obviously changes a lot of creative plans. PW Insider adds that the most plans for WrestleMania 35 main event picture are now out the window. <sighs> but as noted recently, the main event was not locked in. Reigns was still expected to be part of one of the top matches. Reigns' announcement did not push up the he did not push up the heel turns by tag team champion Dean Ambrose. That turn was planned for future, but officials decided to pull the trigger early. PW Insider adds that this was not a creative plan made at the last minute due to Reigns' announcement, but the turn was moved up. 
So yes, they now WWE has made a couple changes. They started that last week, of course, when they turned Braun Strowman babyface again by him attacking Drew Mc Dolph Ziggler and being kicked in the face by Drew McIntyre, and they continued that this week by helping the Shield brothers win the tag team titles by chasing off Drew McIntyre and leaving Dolph Ziggler on his own. And then, of course, the Elias turn, which Elias has pretty much been a babyface majority of his time. Like, recently, he's been more of a babyface than a heel. Even, like, he just comes out and he's like, hello, my name is Elias, and they do the walk with Elias thing. And that's just how Elias is. Now, WWE has got a lot to work with, and... The Monday Night Raw is in a, in a pickle right now because, yes, Roman Reigns was the guy that they pushed. Roman Reigns was the guy that they expected to be there for the next 10 years. I'm pretty sure Vince McMahon himself did not expect Roman Reigns to be, like, there'd be a time in WWE. So, like, he expected Roman Reigns to be there past his time on, on like, left because, you know, Vince McMahon's in his 70s. He doesn't have much time left on this earth. And Roman was supposed to be the last guy that he picked to carry the company for the next 10, 15 years or whatever years it is that Roman would be here. This is definitely something that hurts the company overall. Monday Night Raw is already a bad show as it is. Having Roman Reigns be the guy who, whether you love him or hate him, he gets a reaction. Whether you love, love him or hate him, he gets a reaction every single week. Whether you boo him, you cheer him, whatever it is, he gets a reaction. And now that he's gone, that's definitely... And with Kevin Owens hurt, Sami Zayn hurt, Bobby Lashley, I guess, is working hurt too. Who's next to get hurt? There's a lot of big names on the Raw roster gone right now. It's not good for Raw. SmackDown also has an injury with Samoa Joe, who is... Out with a knee injury or a leg injury. I got some news on that too. This is just a this is just like a bad time. And there is talk about NXT call ups coming up from NXT to help fill the void of Roman Reigns. But it's like, why would you bring up somebody from NXT when you have a lot of talent on the main roster that you got to give a chance? Don't worry about pulling up talent that don't need to come up, like a Velveteen Dream. Alistair Black could come up. He's been ready for a while, but his storyline with Johnny Gargano, whoever the actual attacker is, whether it's Gargano or not, he's going to probably come up after Survivor Series of War Games. So that would probably be one way to fill the void. Hopefully they do right by him. But Roman Reigns... Is going to be it's going to be hard to see WWE do much right. They haven't done anything right half the time anyway with this talent. It's time to let this talent run, and it's also time for the talent to be like, well, Roman's out. This is our chance to do something here. Let's do it. We got ourselves we got ourselves a chance. Roman being out, the show must go on. The show must go on. It's time for us to show Vince McMahon, hey, he wasn't the only guy that you can rely on. Give us a chance. Now, a guy like, of course, a Bobby Roode, who's in his like late 30s or, or 40s, is not going to be someone you're talking about. The AOP, they need to be pushed. The Chad Gable is definitely somebody who needs to be given opportunity. All these guys, Seth Rollins has got to be the top guy. Your four top guys right now should be Drew McIntyre, um, Drew McIntyre, Braun Strowman, Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins. You can have two feuding for the Universal Championship. You can have two feuding for the Intercontinental Title. If you want to throw Dolph Ziggler into those feuds eventually, fine. But this should definitely be well, this should definitely be a four man show at the top. Now, if you want to take the Intercontinental Title off of, off of Seth Rollins and give it to somebody who's not one of those four guys and have those four guys be your Universal Championship feuds for the next four or five months, then fine. Not a problem with that. It's time to give others opportunity as well. Maybe Elias can win the Intercontinental title from a heel Dean Ambrose. I don't know. We'd have to sit there and watch. Definitely going to be something worth watching for the next uh, next three or four months. The next three or four months are going to be really telling, hopefully, for WWE. No more formulaic Ross, please. No more formulaic tag. No, no more rinse and repeat. Give us fresh. Give us superstars that we want to see and actually elevate guys who need to be elevated. Roman's not there anymore. 
Roman's not there anymore for now. And the problem with leukemia is, and the fact that this is his second go at it, this isn't like the first time he's had to go at it, this is the second time, it's going to be harder for him to beat it because it comes back more aggressive. What will Roman go through to battle this? The first time he beat it, and it came at the time when football didn't want him anymore, but WWE does, now that the leukemia is back, he had to relinquish the WWE Universe title and go home to beat the disease. It's impossible to know exactly what Reigns is dealing with because there are different types of leukemia, according to WebMD. The type of cancer shows signs, if not first detected, in a blood test of a person that appears pale, has enlarged lymph nodes, swollen gums, and an enlarged liver or spleen, significantly bruising, bleeding, fever, persistent infections, fatigue, or a small pinpoint rash. Chemotherapy will, be, will need to happen, which means that Reigns will most likely lose his hair due to the treatments. This is due to the fact that the chemotherapy treatments targets all rapidly dividing cells, no matter if they are healthy cells or cancer cells, since hair is one of those most rapidly dividing cells. In the body, the chemotherapy usually causes hair loss because those follicles are attacked in the process. According to Cancer Care Northwest, chemotherapy is typically given in cycles. I hate chemotherapy. It's actually one of the worst things you can give somebody. If weed or like, um, you know, weed or like THC or whatever it is, part of that, marijuana was legal everywhere, then it would be a lot better. I don't know if that would work for, um, chemo, for leukemia, but definitely would be something probably better than what he has. Followed by a period of rest. A cycle ha can last one or more days, but it usually one, two, three, or four weeks long. A course of chemotherapy is comprised of multiple cycles. Each course is different, but generally consists of four to six cycles. This is Rain's second round with the disease, and as he stated, he quickly brought leukemia into remission 11 years ago, but now that it's back, as Dave Meltzer said on the Wrestling Observer Radio, the fact that it's coming back for a moment might mean he is in for a very hard fight with the disease. There's different forms of leukemia that have different dangers, and it hasn't released what he has, which is private, and honestly, he should not release it. That is not something we need to know. All we need to know is that he is doing better, and hopefully we'll be back in no time. He, for, for leukemia in general, there is a 57 chance of surviving five years five years ago, so it's a touch-and-go thing. He's young, he's strong, he's not, he's got a daughter, I think he's going to make it, I think he'll be, beat the odds, but there's no, you know, this is something that you're essentially born with, a certain DNA that leads to this. I essentially mean he had it before, and the thing that sucks is a lot of people, I just remember with, like, with Ed Cohn, because Roman is 33 years old, and he had it, has had it twice now, and I remember with Ed Cohn, who had cancer, it wasn't leukemia, but if you have it at a young age, I think the odds of coming back, again, are probably pretty good, which really sucks. Hopefully, Roman Reigns will be able to beat the leukemia again. It never comes back. It never comes back in an in an ideal world. This never would happen, and Roman Reigns would still be an active WWE superstar. But for now, all we can do is send Joe Onawale our best, and he fights to beat leukemia once again. Like I said before on Monday Night Raw, we are not. We are definitely not going to see Roman Reigns. The earliest we would see Roman come back, if he even beat leukemia for a second time would be the Royal Rumble 2020 or WrestleMania 35, 36. We, he is going to be gone. We are not going to see him for the rest of this year and majority of all next year. We might see him in some kind of out of theirs or something. We're not going to see this guy for a long time. I hope that he is going to get better. I hope we will see him in the future. But there is no telling, and hopefully all this will get better. WW, now, the, now that he is off to fight leukemia, and I hope the best for him, the ball is in WWE's court to push other superstars on Raw and give other superstars a chance. Speaking of giving WWE superstars a chance, why is WWE Evolution happening? Why? This weekend, WWE visits the Nassau Veteran Memorial Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, for the Evolution pay-per-view, which, of all the places to go, you want in the Nassau Coliseum? Really? You couldn't find a better place? The first ever all-women's pay-per-view, quote-unquote, Michael Cole is there, that's not a woman, I'm just saying, we'll see Ronda Rousey defend the one women's championship against Nikki Bella. <coughs> Why would you want to see that match? While WWE has also announced a battle royal to crown the new number one contender for one of the women's titles, WWE has building the show as a historic event with the female WWE talent taking center stage. Really? They've really been building 
this as a historic event because quite honestly the last four five six like three like six seven weeks has not felt like it while this week's editions of Raw and SmackDown Live did very little to promote the pay-per-view, they melted on the most recent lessons of everybody knew that the, the internal reaction to WWE Evolution was that nobody in the company saw it as a big show. And what a surprise. Meltzer further noted that the event was announced with Stephanie McMahon to brag about the show. So basically, this entire Women's Evolution pay-per-view is just for something for Stephanie to feed her fucking massive ego. Her entire ego. Her entire ego, which is massive enough as it is that if it was if it was a real thing, would crush everybody inside of any stadium that they went to. She was she her ego wasn't big enough that she had to sit there and brag about something. Also, the other reason was obvious is the fact that they're going to crown Jewel this um, five days later or six days later, and it's it was a way to compensate for the women not going to Saudi Arabia. But, again, Stephanie McMahon, who has her massive ego trips all the time. She, like, undercuts every man, every man, woman, and child who comes into the, into WWE's ring. If she comes into that ring, she is going to undercut you, she, and no one can do anything. She cuts Kurt Angle's balls off, she cut McFoley's balls off, she cuts off everybody except for her husband's. And it's just pathetic. This woman has needs help. This woman needs to get out of the fucking ring, out of the WWE. Go do your philanthropy all you want, but stay off of TV. This show, and they and they want to do multiple of these. Yeah, no, this is a train wreck. It was never a big show for them. I knew it was never going to be a big show for them. So what can you do? You just sit there, you watch the thing, you go, you throw it up afterwards, and like I said, I'm only going to be talking about three matches, and that is all. I do not care about the rest. Now, we're going to go away from the news for a minute. I'm going to talk about a nice little article here written by WrestleZone writer Tyler Therese, Tre- Therese, Therese, who put out an article, WWE Evolution Underwhelming at Best. He writes, and this is all from Tyler on WrestleZone, recently confirmed that Bailey, Sasha Banks, and, Riot, and Natalia would be teaming to face the Riot Squad at their upcoming all-women's pay-per-view WWE Evolution. And that means that eight matches have been made, it's seven now, for the historical event. After looking up and down the WWE Evolution card, I came away with one major feeling, a lot of indifference. This should be a thrilling event filled with first, and instead there are only a few matches that I'm actually excited for. Me too, I will agree with that. You have three matches. It's seven now. This is before that. But there are three matches now. And that is Charlotte versus Becky, which should be the last match for a very long time. Io Shirai versus Tony Storm. And Shayna Baszler versus Kyrie Sane. Everything else on this show means absolutely nothing. Let's work from the bottom up as we make our way through the Evolution card. As far as the six-woman tag goes, it seems more like a match that would be a random episode of Raw, as it has been. Not a marquee card. There has been next to no build for it, and it's a shame that a veteran like Natalya and two of the most talented women in the company, in Bailey and Sasha Banks, I would go with four as the movie Riot is one of the more talented ones too, are relegated to a heatless event when they were at the forefront of the women's revolution headlining events in NXT, Bailey Banks should honestly be headlining the card not put in a meaningless match. So, uh, some have heavily criticized the 21 in Battle Royal, but that's not exactly a match I had much of an issue with. WWE has always put on a Battle Royal on to what they deem major events to get more talent on the card, and I'm glad that so many faces from the past, such as Ivory and Andre Blaze, will be will get to participate in the do due to it. Yeah, Michelle McCool's in there too, and you see what happened at the ro- first ever Roman's Royal Rumble. She had the most eliminations in that match. Yeah, gee, I wonder why. It must be must be beneficial to be married to the Undertaker. I'm just saying. The tag team match between Trish, Jan- Trish and Lita vote against now Alicia Fox and Mickey James should be fun, but the past couple weeks build have actually made me less interested in seeing it. The promos have not been good, especially that practice promo in Philadelphia. I mean, come on. The Allen Iverson practice thing happened 10, 15, 16 years before any half the people in the audience were even alive or old enough to know. 
And switching the two solo matches from a tag match has only dampened my enthusiasm. I feel like both storylines, one or two, one of two old foes going at it in generation, a generational dream match, have both been muddled by combining them. As far as the 2018 Mayhem Classic go, final goes, it's nice to see someone as talented as Io Shirai get the spotlight against Tony Storm, another great talent. That said, I would have much preferred it if the winner of the Mayhem Classic was challenging the NXT Women's Champion on this card. I really don't have much interest in seeing Kairi Sane versus Shayna Baszler yet again. I disagree with him on this one because I actually want to see this happen again. These, girl, these girls can put on great matches. They did great at the Mayhem Classic last year. They did great at Brooklyn this year. Of course, the uh, match in NXT in February was kind of a, da um, a downer for this, this robbery. But this should be a good match if Vince McMahon books it right. And having so much of a card being filled by NXT talent seems like a waste. The lone match that I'm baffled by inclusion of is the UK Women's Championship match, which is not included anymore. Most fans of WWE don't even know that that exists right now, and even fewer are invested in seeing Mayor Ripley defend her title on the card. Ripley is very talented, but it's not as if they built a, to a hot feud here. WWE hasn't announced who she is facing officially. It's not happening. As I said, that match has been pulled from the card because the NXT UK Women's Championship is not in continuity yet. I don't know why they even put that on the card if you weren't going to air the win her winning the championship. Yes, Rhea Ripley is the first NXT UK Women's Champion. Sorry for the spoilers, but it's something that they put out there and it's not happening now. As far as the main event goes, I understand financially why Ronda Rousey and Nikki Bella are headlining. I don't because it makes no fucking financial sense whatsoever. If you want to sell tickets, you should have put Ronda Rousey versus Sasha Banks, Ronda Rousey versus Bailey, or Ronda Rousey versus Natalia, or even better, Ronda Rousey versus Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Natalia in a fatal four way. That would have sold you fucking tickets, not this garbage. And I have no interest in it. It does help that I haven't been able to get invested in the Rousey's WWE run at all so far this year. Maybe seeing her get brutally knocked out too many times made her badass or disappear. I would kind of agree on that. If, Ron if Ronda Rousey would have came into WWE as an undefeated monster of UFC, she would be feel a little bit more badass than she does if she was booked right in WWE TV and actually cut promos and not be given garbage to say then maybe it would have helped. Ronda Rousey has seen the lose a little bit of the dust, the, the luster of her debut match at WrestleMania this year. She's just falling into, she's starting to look more like a, just another woman on the roster. And being team with the Bella Twins for two matches did not help that one bit. This is not going to help Ronda Rousey either. This match should last less than 60 seconds because that's how it needs to go. It should be a fine match as both can put together technically sound matches. Bullshit. But unless there's a surprising angle during the match, I can't imagine carrying much at all. Overall, I just see a lot of misused talent. Oscar was the hottest women's performance coming into WrestleMania this year, and now she's just another entrant in the Battle Royal. I agree. This is completely ridiculous, and it shows how WWE has dropped the ball with all due respect. There's absolutely no reason that a talent like Oscar and Sasha Banks should be getting a singles match over Rhea Ripley. Which, again, they are not. She is, they, the, she is not going to be getting a match there. My feeling is that you're going to see Rhea Ripley in the Women's Battle Royal because her title's not in continuity yet. She is going to get in the Battle Royal with eight other women for the um, NXT brand. She'll get eliminated, and she'll move on. Do not have do not have Michael Cole, Renee Young, or Beth Phoenix mention the NXT Women's Ch K Women's UK Championship whatsoever. It's not in continuity yet. It does not exist in the WWE um, canon yet. Just don't even mention it. So. Yes, I agree with uh, on most of these parts by Tyler Treese. You can find his article at VesselZone.com. I just wanted to read you out there. I agree with a lot of these parts on him. Yes, it just feels like an underwhelming show. And as we did just see, WWE did not see this as a big show. It was just a way for that for um, Stephanie McMahon to go to her little meetings and be like, Yeah, I announced the first ever Raw women's pay-per-view. All women's pay-per-view. Let's see. Japan's beat you to it. Um, Impact Wrestling's beat you to it. All these other, all these other um, promotions have beat you to it. So trying to act like you are the forefront of women's evolution, give me a break. You on the main roster are killing the women's evolution. Putting Nikki Bella in the main event of a fucking pay-per-view. Are you kidding me? 
Nikki Bella has no right to be in that main event. I'm going to be real honest with you. I'm going to watch Evolution. I'm going to like review the three matches that I want to see as soon as that's not that match. <clears throat> As soon as the match before Nikki Bella versus Ronda Rousey goes, I'm turning off the network because I have no desire to see that match whatsoever. I'm going to probably start my review during that match of those three matches. Other than that, I don't give a fuck about the rest of Evolution. I'm not even doing Crown Jewel for other reasons. But, yeah, I'm not talking. I'm, I'm going to talk about Io Shirai versus Tony Storm because that should be a hell of a match. Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch hopefully should be a great match, and Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler, which should be which should be Shayna Baszler's swan song in NXT. I expect Shayna Baszler on Raw or SmackDown this Monday or Tuesday. So that's all that's coming with uh, Evolution tomorrow. We will talk about those. After, we're we're going to go through the news and we'll talk about the three matches I want to see. It. I I can't wait to see it, Evolution. News on why Alliance attacked Baron Corbin. This week's Raw saw Alliance make an apparent babyface turn by smashing the guitar over the back of acting marginal manager Baron Corbin. PWM started reports that the turn was something official saw as likely happening down the line, but pulling the trigger on this week's Raw may have been due to the rippling effects of Roman Reigns taking time off to battle leukemia. Like I said earlier, he is a great, he is, he's been pretty much a babyface. Except he does, like, shit on the towns. He's never gonna forget what he did in Seattle, which was fucking amazing. And having a guy who is a legit heel in Baron Corbin, which nobody likes, being hit with that guitar was perfect to get ba- get the turn, the full turn to happen. What is going to be interesting now is Elias coming out to perform this time. How is he going to respond this time? News on Tr- Trish and Lita plans going after Evolution. Excuse me. <coughs> WWE has plans for Trish Stratus and Lita to return after their match with, Alex- with Alicia Fox and Mickey James at WWE Evolution on Sunday. According to PW Insider, the current idea is that the two Hall of Famers will be used for major events like the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. No, no, no. No, no, no. God, no. No, we do not need this. Evolution, fine, whatever. You want to get your little, um, you want to get your celebration of women out. You need to focus on the women that you have in your, on your main roster. There is absolutely no reason whatsoever that we need to see either one of either one of those at WrestleMania or Royal Rumble or SummerSlam or Survivor Series. Make it a one and done. Get you need. This is why no. This is why nobody on the main roster feels special because you keep go, taking that bag of nostalgia and pulling out names. Ooh, Trish Lita. Let's take those and not putting focus and not putting focus on everyone else. Why is Sasha Banks and Bailey not used well? Because you're focusing on Ronda Rousey, Nikki Bella, and her sister Brie Botchmoan. It needs to stop. When do you, when does WWE draw the line? I want to know this. When does WWE draw the line with nostalgia? It's got to stop. It has got to stop soon. Because if it doesn't stop soon, then what is the damn point of everything? It just makes no sense. What is the point of having superstars that are young enough to carry this company for the next 10, 15 years if you say, fuck them, let's go get Trish and Lita, let's go get DX, let's go get the Brothers of Destruction, fuck Sami Zayn, fuck Kevin Owens, fuck Finn Balor, fuck all these guys and girls because they don't matter to us. If you're not from the Attitude Era or the Ruthless Aggression Era, fuck you. That's how WWE is playing the game right now. If you're not from the last two eras, the, the um, era to era or the ruthless aggression era, go fuck yourself. That is all they're saying to everybody on the main roster. And if I'm in NXT, I don't want to go up there because I know as soon as I go up there, I don't mean a damn thing to Vince McMahon. I don't mean a damn thing to Kevin Dunn. I don't mean a damn thing to anybody. Why would I want to go up there and waste my career on that? I mean, Mike Kanellis was not used for over a year. He's finally getting to do something in the 205 Live brand. That's great for him. I hope Mike Bennett, Mike Kanellis, is actually going to be able to showcase what he can do. Because WWE is just going to just destroy anybody and everybody. Hope you enjoy Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era. I hope you enjoy Ricochet and Alistair Black and Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Because as soon as they come up, they mean absolutely nothing. Plain and simple. Absolutely nothing. 
WWE Crown Jewel 2 go on as scheduled. There was a big rumor going around that this past Wednesday was the cutoff day for WWE to decide whether they were going to do Crown Jewel or not in Saudi Arabia. WWE had, did set a statement out saying they have operated in the Middle East for nearly 20 years and has developed a sizable and dedicated fan base. Bullshit. Considering the heinous crimes committed in that the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, the company faced a very difficult decision as it relates to its event scheduled for November 2nd in Riyadh. Similar to the other U.S.-based companies who plan to continue operations in Saudi Arabia, the company has decided to uphold its contractual obligations to the General Sports Authority and stage the event. Full year 2018 guidelines has been in stage in the Riyadh event is scheduled. Um... Vince McMahon, this, the WWE going to get this blood money, and what it is, it is blood money, is just showing that Vince McMahon does not have a conscience, Vince McMahon does not have morals or convictions anymore, Vince McMahon only cares about money, and I honestly don't, I honestly think Vince McMahon called Saudi Arabia or something like, as like, soon as Saudi Arabia is like, we're going to pay you $48 million a year, Vince was like, what do I sign? Did not care that this this deal, they're not going to make it to 10 years. They're not. They're absolutely not making this to 10, making it 10 years that they have. This deal is going to go bad. It's already, it's already looking like a disaster anyway. This thing is going to go bad one way or another. It's just WWE and their stock, by the way, their stock before this whole entire crown jewel thing happened. Before this, um, this, um, Jamal, um, this Jamal guy, this, um, Washington Post reporter was found, was, was killed by Saudi Arabian, um, assassins. Their stock was at $96 a share, going up to $100. It's below 70 now. Below 70. It started dropping and dropping and dropping, and it's going to continue to drop. So, Vince McMahon, I hope you enjoy that $48 million you have because your, your shareholders do not. And they're just going to keep dropping and dropping. I hope it drops to where it should be valued. And honestly, the value of their, t their company should be at $10 or less. I'm just saying. WWE has done nothing in the last 10 years to, to warrant that $96 that they had a share. It should be less than $10 a share. And I hope it drops down that far. You want you want Vince McMahon to get his um, act together? Watch the shareholders just continue to sell and sell and sell, and that stock just continues to drop. Eventually, he'll be like, "Well, we're not making any money in the stock exchange. Why is our stock down so much? Oh, we're in bed with a a band of murderous um, fuckheads, murderous um, criminals." Yeah, I think we need to get out of this before we lose completely. Vince McMahon has got to go, and somebody with a brain needs to get into WWE and get this shit back together. Wonder Woman with Samoa Joe has been a while. Samoa Joe has been out injured. Samoa Joe was meant to wrestle AJ Styles at house shows last week, but was nowhere to be seen. In fact, he hasn't been seen on television since his match against Jeff Hardy on October 9th. It turns out there was a good reason for this, as the wrestling is over, reporting that he is dealing with an undisclosed injury. We got a few more details on Samoa Joe injury. A source told Russell Zone last week that Samoa Joe was at SmackDown 1000 but was wearing a walking boot while he was backstage. So it appears that the Orange County native is suffering from some sort of foot injury at the moment. That's all the additional information we got at this time. But we'll keep sure to update you article if anything else comes to Samoa Joe's injury. I'm just going to say this, that it's been a really rough run for Samoa Joe in WWE since he's come to the main roster. Because this is his third... His third injury that has made him miss. He's missed the first WrestleMania since he came up to the main roster, and now he's out with another injury. I'm really hoping that Samoa Joe is able to make it to Royal Rumble and at least make it to WrestleMania so he can have that WrestleMania that I'm pretty sure he wants to check off his um, bucket list before he decides to retire for good for wrestling. This guy has had... He, he is a good hand. He should have been WWE Champion, but... With the fact that he is injured, that might have that might have played into a factor too. Why they didn't pull the trigger on him is because he ended up actually getting injured, and they couldn't just put the title on him. And I figured when Jeff Hardy pulled out a little bit of Willow out of him, which anybody wants to know who Willow is, go check out Willow Willow the Wisp from from his Impact Wrestling days on YouTube. 
that Willow is the violent, the, the violent persona of the more violent persona of Jeff Hardy, and when he started beating the hell out of Samoa Joe's leg and making it so that Samoa Joe could not continue, and he advanced to the World Cup, I felt like that was a way to write Samoa Joe off to deal with any type of injury that he has. I hope Samoa Joe gets better. I hope to see him back before Survivor Series, and hopefully he can stay healthy enough to make it to WrestleMania. So the Chris Jericho cruise is starting, I believe, yesterday or today, and Rey Mysterio is booked for this. WWE, in their pettiness, tried to keep Rey Mysterio from getting on this cruise. While Chris Jericho's Rock and Wrestling Major kicks off in four, its four-day voyage starting today, the trip won't go under, get underway without some controversy courtesy of WWE. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter reports that the WWE tried to prevent Rey Mysterio from making the voice despite being previously scheduled months in advance. The following is ex- excerpt is from The Observer. <clears throat> Even though he was told he told them of it as a pre-existing commitment and he would not wrestle on it, just be a guest, he was trying, WWE was trying to keep Mysterio from going on the Jericho Cruise this weekend. He's not booked for this weekend's house shows. Jericho took to his, his talk as Jericho podcast and briefly addressed Rey Mysterio's appearance. He's going to be on the cruise, Jericho said. He'd be signed with WWE, but one of the caveats was that this was one of his dates, which I'm sure Vince McMahon was quote-unquote thrilled about. Yeah, WWE and their pettiness. Vince McMahon has always come out and say, make sure to have all your pre, like all your dates for indies or anywhere else um, finished, all your commitments outside WWE finished before you come in, so you're not, so in case everything in WWE doesn't work out, you're not burning bridges elsewhere. I mean, yes, it is, it is Jericho's cruise, but come on, WWE, are you serious? Are you going to have, you're seriously going to do that because that just makes you look like a bunch of assholes. It does. So, if you're on the Rockin' Major, Rockin' the, the Jericho cruise, and you meet Rey Mysterio, just be like, thank God that he had this planned out because there was a chance that WWE tried the best to keep him off of it. As we mentioned, there is a pool from the Mixed Match Challenge. I guess I do have it on here. It was, it is, oh, the match pool from Evolution. Uh, uh, yeah, they had, it's worth noting that the YouTube description of the Io Shirai versus Tony Storm, the Miko, the, the Miko Senamore versus Tony Storm match had her scheduled, it said on the, in the description that she would be battling Rhea Ripley for the women's title of the UK at Sunday's Evolution. That was, of course, an error. It's interesting that the UK women's title match has been pulled from the official Evolution card on WWE's website. The title is currently held by Rhea Ripley and has been defended at some major NXT live events in Florida this summer. WWE noted there would be an NXT Women's title match at Evolution when they first announced the pay-per-view several months ago. My biggest problem with the fact that they even mentioned this being on the show was that when Triple H booked his... When Triple H did his record tapings for the UK, which is, I think, three tapings in, the Women's Championship wasn't done until taping three. They might be in four tapings in, but, like, taping three was when they did the Women's Championship. If they would have did the Women's Championship on the first set of tapings in, like, episode one and two, then we would already have the title um, established, and then it could be defended at Evolution. This was should not have been even close to mention. They say Ripley was set to defend her title against Isla Dawn in Evolution, but it's noted the match is no longer being listed on by WWE. It could be because Ripley's title run has yet to air, but there is no word yet on when the win might air. Ripley defended Storm in the title match finals at the NXT UK tapings back in late August to win the title. So it was taping, that was taping, that was pretty much, yeah, the second set of tapings, which will not air until... I don't know, since they're doing two now, it probably won't air until, not this week coming up, but the week after. So, two weeks after Evolution, her title match, especially if they're going to do two episodes, then her title win will show up in two weeks. And the Don vs. Ripley match that was to take place at Evolution was taped in the most recent NXT tapings in Plymouth, England, another sign that it will not be happening again at Evolution. That is a damn shame for the fact that we lose in a match at Evolution because that was another match I was looking forward to was the NXT Women's Championship match. Now, speaking of Evolution, we are done with the news for now, but I'm going to talk about the three matches that I want to see. 
The three matches I want to see are in order. That is the Women's Championship for SmackDown. That is Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch. This time, this feud has been going on since SummerSlam because Becky Lynch turned quote unquote heel in WWE's look, whereas she was justified so much that that Charlotte Flair should have been heel. And a big rumor of why Charlotte Flair vs. Ronda Rousey is probably not going to happen at WrestleMania in the main event is because they fucked up so badly with this feud with Becky Lynch that you had Becky Lynch come out and mock Edge about his neck injury and people were cheering in SmackDown Live 1000. Now, what needs to happen at Evolution? Charlotte Flair needs to do the job and get put Becky Lynch over. There is no reason for her to win this championship. No reason whatsoever. Then you can have Becky Lynch versus Oscar at Survivor Series if you want to have Oscar win the Battle Royal, which again, do not care. But this match is probably going to go about 20 minutes, probably. Becky Lynch needs to win. This match, in my opinion, should be closing the show if you want to go with that. And of course, number two would be number th- my second most watched, most need to see match is Shayna Baszler versus Kyrie Sane. I say Kyrie Sane is going to win that match as well. There is no reason why Kyrie Sane should lose this match. This will be Shayna Baszler's swan song to NXT. She's not needing NXT anymore. Hell, the entire four horse women of MMA really don't need NXT, but we have not seen Jessamyn Duke or Amina Shafir in on TV yet. My question is, are we going to see them after NXT TakeOver War Games on the show? I don't know, but that's neither here nor there. It should be Kyrie Sane winning the match in another hard fought victory. And then, of course, the match that everyone should be looking forward to and should steal the show, Io Shirai versus Tony Storm. This one is a toss-up for me because Tony Storm is right is where she should wanted to be last year, where she lost to Kyrie Sane, as Kyrie Sane went on to win the whole thing. But Tony Storm, everyone's expecting Tony Storm to win. I don't know who's going to win this one, but I think I'm going to agree that I think Tony Storm is going to win this one. It's going to be one of those ones where Tony Storm probably has to hit two Storm Zeros or two Tiger Drivers, whichever one she uses, to win this thing. Just expect a couple kickouts, a kickout for the Aisai Moonsault and a Storm Zero. And this one is going to hopefully be a great match. I do not put any stock in the Vince McMahon running this show right at all because I just feel like Vince McMahon is going to sabotage and sacrifice this entire show. And we're going to see this entire thing. I said it before and I'll say it again. Evolution itself, the pay-per-view itself, has had less build and has and feels worse of a pay-per-view than ECW. ECW December to Dismember from 2000, what was it, 2006? Yeah. That's how bad this feels to me. Is that this is this is how this is going to be. It just feels like ECW December to Dismember had a better build, and this is going to be worse than ECW December to Dismember, and we all know how much of a shit show that one was. But that is Unscripted for this week. Make sure to find me on Twitter at the, fra- at the Frauds. Find me on twitch.tv slash thefrauds08. Find me, um, hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Make sure to check out Raw, SmackDown, NXT, NXT UK, and the May Young Classic videos on this channel. I will see you guys tomorrow for an Evolution Mini, 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 Mini review as I will go over the three matches I care about, the other ones I won't even mention. But until then, my name is France. I will see you guys tomorrow for the mini review of Evolution, Monday Night Raw, next Monday, SmackDown Live, and then NXT and NXT, the double NXT UK, and NXT, and then we'll be back here again for Unscripted. I don't give a shit about Crown Jewel. I don't want to see Shawn Michaels return. I don't want to see, I don't want to see 450 rolls take up 40 minutes of my time. So, everybody who wants to see Crown Jewel next week, more power to you. Until then, I'll see you guys later.